you to drive off the M6 um, into Nutsford, you might think that all is wealthy. Even as you drive up to this end of Nutsford, you pass the Bentley garage uh, for Manchester, an area of extreme wealth, but it's not all like that. Within Nutsford itself, there there is really this only only this one estate and it's its neighbouring estate Shore Heath, um, both of which are overspilled, but the rest of the town, eighty percent of the town, is extremely wealthy. Within the same postcode bracket and within the same um, electoral ward are the three, four million pound houses in the town, which causes immense problems with any funding for anything that goes on in this estate. The welcome uh, began about 19 years ago, but it didn't begin as the welcome that you see today. Um, it began um, as a project from the local Methodist circuit where one of the churches had some money left from a building project and decided to appoint a deacon who came onto the estate and simply listened, simply wanted to find out what could the church do to help. Not just to be church, but to actually help people who are in such great need. It's the community who gave this place its name. They called it the Welcome because that's what it is. Well, it's called the Welcome Club. And I always feel welcome when I come in here. The Welcome Church has always been very important to me, but when my son died of alcohol poisoning, the support that the church from the Welcome combined with the church from the people that came from the Methodist church was outstanding and I really don't think that my husband and I would have been able to cope as well as we did without it. From its early beginnings as a sort of second hand shop that we, when we got the first unit and then a, a soup kitchen and then um, all the children's work we now have so much that goes on it's an absolute kaleidoscope of different um, events and uh, sessions that are run, everything from the craft club and the education workshops, um, helping adults who struggled um, in high school and even beyond there to, uh, to do anything in life because their literacy levels are so low to just learn some simple basics to help them to get a job. There's a job club, there's a credit union, there's masses of stuff, so much so that we've had to um, set up a separate charity who now runs most of that side of things that enables the church to be church, that enables us to do the spiritual side. We still look after the spiritual, social and emotional well-being of all the residents of the estate. And that's, in a sense, why it's such a kaleidoscope of things, because we meet the needs of the people. We look and we listen. From the early beginnings, there was a real sense of people of faith being drawn in. Often people who initially were de-churched, um, but over the years, we've had a lot of people who are very unchurched, who've found a home here. People who, um, who you'd said, w are you going to go to church? Well, they might go if it's a wedding or if it's a funeral, but that are to push often. They'd rather just go to the do afterwards. The community developed and the church developed in their way to the extent that when I became the minister here in 2009, um, one of the things that became very clear as we were beginning to the process of setting up the charity was also that they wanted to formally be recognised as a church. They were um, a separate entity of another church to begin with for many, many years. And they kept coming to me and saying, why are we not church? We are church. This is church. So we went through the process and they're now formally a church in their own right, but in their way. When you talk to the people who are coming to Traveller's Bible Study, they're all at a different stage on their journey. And the same with our Sunday worship and the same with our craft club. Over the years, they've been people who've been on a journey. Craft club has less of a spiritual emphasis to it, but it's still about meeting the needs of the people and where those um, needs are spiritual. The people who come, they share their faith and they share those journeys. Over the recent years, we've seen particularly um, local people becoming leaders within the church in their own right. Uh, Julie and Rowena have become church stewards and Julie came initially about eight years ago as the cook to the welcome, um, only um, with a person not of faith, only doing a demon chocolate cake. And now she's out in the rest of the circuit preaching. 
seven years ago started working at the Welcome, absolutely no interest in Christianity whatsoever. Since then um, have come regularly to worship and through there have realised how the Holy Spirit works. Um, the Welcome is such a wonderful place and what we try and do is treat people as Jesus would have treated them with love and compassion and kindness. Rowena has come on from strength to strength, from somebody who's struggled with life in general to now being somebody who's able to be a person who people in the church turn to and say, what can I do about this? And even in the midst of all the problems she faces still in her life, she's still able to help other people to move forwards. I came to the welcome, um, speech to Debbie um, over something, and then I started to come to the Welcome Church regularly. I also got married in February two years ago and had a wedding blessing here. The Welcome Church is so a good part of my life. I really enjoy coming and there's always somebody at the end of the phone if I need to speak to them, there's always somebody there. One of the challenges of my ministry, being um, a minister in, in North Cheshire, is having um, the Longridge Estate as one of my uh, places of ministry, which is one of the most challenged wards in Cheshire East. But I also have um, churches in Alderley Edge, which is the richest square mile in Britain. So I have both extremes and both give me life in different ways. Yes, this place is tough. Yes, there are occasions where on a Sunday you could have had a whole service planned and it's not a normal service in any stretch of the imagination. Somebody comes through the door drunk on drugs or whatever and we abandon and we deal with that person's needs at that time. This is a really tough place to be minister but it's also a place of great fun great life talking to the people and sharing their journey that's the thing that gives me life um, and actually enables me to realize that the very same problems that I see here are the very same problems that I see in my other ministries where there's an immense more wealth um, around within the churches and within the areas the same problems just different ways of approaching them.